Hi, I'm Jamie Poisson. You may have been hearing some decently good news about the economy lately. Inflation is down, and technically, we haven't actually gotten the recession that everybody seemed to be predicting. At least, not yet. So then, why for so many people doesn't it feel like our economy is on the right track? If you ask some economists, they would probably tell you that our economy isn't growing fast enough. And a lot of them have been frantically pointing out this thing called productivity. I'm not really talking about how many things you cross off your to-do list in the afternoon. I'm talking about how we use that word in economics to describe how many things of value Canada actually makes for all the hours that we're working. It's low. In fact, it's declining. And why does that matter to you? Well, those same economists would say it's the number one thing that decides what our standard of living is in this country because it's a big factor in how much we get paid and can even influence how much things cost. Today, Doug Porter is here. He's the chief economist at BMO, the Bank of Montreal. And we're going to talk about what the Bank of Canada is calling a productivity emergency, what we can do about it, and also whether this is really as big a deal as economists are saying. Doug, hi, thank you so much for coming on to Front Burner. It's a pleasure to have you. Well, thank you for having me, Jamie, and it's a pleasure to join you. So I'm I'm hoping that we can start by kind of de-jargoning the word productivity, or at least the way that we use it when we're talking about the economy. What does it actually measure? What is it? Well, actually, your introduction was was fairly good. It uh, it really laid out essentially what productivity is. It's the the value of goods and services that we produce divided by the number of hours we work. So it, uh, you know, in simple terms, it's uh, how productive we are as uh, as a society, as as an economy. Um, you know, an- another very rough and way to, to think of productivity is it's it's basically the total amount of output, sometimes known as GDP, mm-hmm. uh, div- divided by the the total number of hours we work. And and a really rough way to think of that is is income per person. You know, and and th- that's that's why it ultimately matters to an individual or for for all of us is because productivity growth will ultimately determine how quickly our, our incomes can, can grow after inflation. And so if we're seeing next to no productivity growth, which is effectively what we've seen over the last five to six years on balance, is it's going to be really tough for people to see gains in income after inflation. Um, and that's that's essentially what we're experiencing. And and it's why economists regard it as, as very important. And I, I would just drive home the point that it may sound like sort of this esoteric concept to worry about, but it, it matters to all of us because it does ultimately determine our, our standard of living, how quickly productivity is growing. And and when we're talking about what productivity actually is, like, I'm, sh- I'm sure that there are people listening right now and they might be thinking to themselves, like, I work very hard. How could I work harder? But this isn't necessarily about people working harder, right? About people being lazy. Yeah. And, and to be clear, it's not, say, the number of hours you work that's, uh, you know, for instance, if we all work 35 hours a week and then decided to work 70 hours a week, our productivity would probably actually go down because it's uh, it's it's you know how much are we producing per hour that uh, that that we work. And and I would say it's it's not necessarily got anything to do or it, it doesn't have anything to do with with how hard we work. That that's a small part of it, but really it's how smart we work, how efficiently we work, how how well organized we are as 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 a team, as a group, as a, as an economy. You know, are, are we doing things in the in the most efficient manner? And I'll, I'll, I'll give you one, you know, one example. If, if, if you think of a farmer, if, if they plow a field by hand or if they plow it with, a, you know, a super sophisticated tractor, they're going to be a whole lot more uh, productive use, using that tractor. They're going to get a whole lot more done in the space of an hour. So some of it is, you know, do we have the machinery and the equipment to do our job? That That's a big part. Of determining how productive we are, it's not it's not how hard we're working; it's whether we're you know, we have the tools to, to to do our job properly. Right, and I want to get into you a bit more in a couple minutes about you know why we might not have all of those tools uh, specifically here, but just you know, of course, you know uh, well, I'm sure, uh, all about the speech that the deputy governor of the Bank of Canada gave in March, 
where she called this an emergency in Canada. And I just wonder if you could put that into context for me, like just how bad is our productivity situation, uh, especially uh, versus similar countries? The, and this is, to be clear, this is not really a new issue for Canada. It, it is something that we've been struggling with, I would, I would argue, for the last 40 years or so that this has been an issue that's come and gone. There there was about a 10-year spell there where we had strong productivity in the late 90s and early 2000s, mostly when the internet was uh, more widely adopted. We did see good productivity growth. But aside from that, it's been challenging in Canada. But I will say it's been especially a challenge in recent years. And I think this is why you know, the Bank of Canada has gone so far as to actually call it an emergency. Essentially, you know, normally our productivity grows by about 1% a year. It doesn't sound like a lot, but that definitely adds up over time. But in the last five, six years, it's it's almost stalled out. We've seen next to no growth. And meanwhile, in the U.S., they've they've managed to churn out productivity growth of almost 2% a year in the, in the last five years, which is closer to, to their long-run average. I will say what's notable is the U.S. has actually been a little bit of an outlier in the last year. In much of the rest of the industrialized world, they've seen challenges too on the productivity front more recently. And I do think... You know, the pandemic played a bit of a role here and the aftermath. You can point to all kinds of different factors as to why productivity would have been especially low in the in the wake of, of the pandemic. But we're we're not alone in, in seeing a relatively weak productivity performance. That doesn't doesn't make it any better. Uh, that's certainly the case. Why do you think that is the case? Like uh what is the US doing that Canada and other industrialized countries haven't been doing? So one theme in the stock market in, in recent years is uh, has been the Magnificent Seven, the so-called Magnificent Seven in, in the U.S., essentially all tech companies. And the, the, the very strong performance of those, those particular stocks, I think, does play into one of the big advantages the U.S. has over much of the rest of the world. And that's a very large portion of their economy is driven by the tech sector. And that's the, the sector of the economy that sees especially large productivity gains, you know, whether, whether you're talking about NVIDIA or, or Microsoft or Apple, uh, th- those, are, those are the areas of the economy that typically see really strong productivity growth, and they are overrepresented in the, in the tech sector to, to their benefit. And I, I do think that's one of the reasons why the U.S. over time has tended to see stronger productivity growth than in Canada, because they have a very large and thriving tech sector. Talking about Canada specifically, let's get into some of the reasons why uh, we are facing these productivity challenges. And I wonder if if it makes sense to start with a reason that I know you have written about and you have argued that that some of it has to do with the very nature of Canada, like its geography, like some, something that's kind of out of our control. And And why is that? Yeah, historically speaking, uh, look, we're we're in some ways we have a lot of advantages in the, in this country. Of course, with our natural resources, we have a very well educated, well trained uh, population, but we also have some inherent disadvantages. You know, we're a relatively small population over a huge area, and we have some pretty intense winter. And you know, those things do throw a lot of sand in the gears in in terms of you know, we we have to transport things over great distances, travel over long distances. Uh, you know, it can deal with some pretty harsh weather, which uh, which can tend to slow things down, ca- cause a lot of disruptions. Though those are, you know, some of the reasons why why Canada would be starting off with a, a lower level of, of productivity growth than uh, productivity than the U.S. But it doesn't really explain why the growth rate would be consistently lower. And there, I think we get more into some of the policy differences or you know the industrial structure differences. And one of them is what I talked about earlier: the fact we have a smaller tech sector. But then you, you also have to look at things like business investment in this country or capital spending is 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 lower. And, and it's been very weak in, in recent years. Uh, and that, to me, is really the nub of the issue as, as to why uh, productivity growth has slowed so much in, in recent years and why we've been so much weaker than, a, say, an economy like the U.S. is because business investment has uh, has been quite a bit lower. And And why is that? Why do you think that is? Well, that that is, you know, not to use the cliche, but that is the sixty-four thousand dollar question. You know, what what could we do to really spur business investment? You know, and if there was a light switch that we could flip, we would have flipped it. You know, I think this is a very broad-based challenge. You know, to me, to me, it's that um, 
in in some ways, you know, are we as welcoming to uh, capital as as we could be? I, I I do wonder about that. You know, is is our tax system favorable uh, to to capital? Like, you know, even even if you look at marginal personal rates, they're they're relatively high, and and they kick at a in at a, a relatively low level. In 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 general, I would I would say that that's probably our our single biggest issue. The the other thing I've I've pointed out is there there is essentially a fixation on housing mm-hmm. in this uh, in this economy. Um, in some years, we actually spend more on residential investment than we do on business investment. And as far as I know, there is no other country in the world that uh, that sees that. Right, like you're essentially saying that instead of you know taking money and investing it in. Uh... A factory that produces, you know, widgets, right? Um, that then people buy. We're just, you know, trading houses around a lot. Is that is that like a fair way for me to describe it? Exactly. And 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 by the way, the the one thing I do want to say is in manufacturing, we actually have pretty decent productivity. That's that's actually not where the the issue is. It's it's actually more of a whole economy. You know, I think oftentimes when people think about business investment or, or productivity, they immediately think of, of manufacturing. Our manufacturing productivity is not bad. It's actually the rest of the economy where we where we do uh, tend, tend to lag behind a bit on, on the U.S. This argument that you know the taxes are too high here that they're um not encouraging people i guess to come here or to start businesses and then to invest money in their businesses you know, i i suppose the pushback to that is that you know the taxes are there to bring in revenue to provide services that are are, are crucial to help canadians including canadians who are struggling right dental care child care and and like, are you saying that you think that the country would be better off if we taxed people and corporations less, and what cut this kind of help? Oh, I'm I'm definitely not trying to say that that is a, a silver bullet that is going to solve all our our productivity woes. You know, for instance, we did have uh, some pretty meaningful tax cuts in the in the late 1990s and and early 2000s. And as I said, we did get a bit of a productivity bump uh, for for a number of years, but then you know we were right back at it. You know, and and productivity uh, uh, deteriorated later on. So it's it's clearly not the the be all and end all solution. I think it's actually much broader than that. But but I do think tax, uh, you know, having a relatively favorable tax backdrop is uh, is important uh, to and to encourage and entice investment. To me, it's not an either or. I think you know, basically, it just behooves governments to uh, to spend money as as you know, as efficiently as, as possible, you know, definitely the public sector is, is part of this story as, as well. Um, you know, they have to deliver services in the, in the most efficient manner that they can too. I do, I do think that, uh, that, that that's part of the broader story as well. Another issue that I, I saw the, the Bank of Canada deputy governor bring up is that we're taking in skilled immigrants, but not recognizing their degrees and training. And too often these people wind up stuck in low wage low productivity jobs. Doing better at matching jobs and workers is crucial to the future of Canada's economy. It was notable to me because this was like one of the first examples that she brought up when she was talking about why we're having these productivity problems. And, you know, how, how does that hurt our pr- productivity? Yeah, in, in general, I would say that if you've got a very well-educated population, which which we do, you want them basically working up to or close to their uh, as close to their potential as possible and and i and i do think we're we're falling short on on that in 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 many ways i do think you know we've got probably a lot of very well educated people working in jobs that are well below you know what their education would uh would would demand and and you know that that is simply inefficient and that that that's true for people who are born here or 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 people who are recently uh, have recently immigrated uh, to Canada, I think that that is uh, that is a broader issue, you know, that uh, it, it's part of the bigger piece, essentially. Another issue I hear people talking about a lot is like a lack of competition in the country in certain industries, right? Phone companies, groceries. And, and is that playing a factor here in our productivity problems? 
I think you can generally say that if you've got a, an economy that's content, you know, that isn't really competing hard in general, that probably means that your productivity growth will, will tend to, uh, tend to be a bit lackluster. And I think there is a case to be made that we could certainly stand with a, a bit more competition in, uh, in, in a variety of sectors. Another thing I would point out, and this, you know, this is a concern that many of many economists have pointed out to, over the years is we, we don't have free, uh, interprovincial trade in, in this country either. And I, I, you know, I think that that's, uh, you know, as they say, shooting ourselves in the foot or a known goal that, uh, we, we could certainly do something to fix relatively, uh, relatively easily, I would say. And wh- wh- why, why would that be important to, to have interprovincial free trade? So there's different measures of uh, how much that could add to to the economy overall. Uh, it runs anywhere from one percent of GDP to seven percent of of GDP. I would I would tend to be towards the lower end of of that range. But if you know, basically, if you allow free trade across provinces, it means that you know people can really and provinces can really concentrate on what they do best. You know, again, it would it would make uh, it would make us more efficient. You know, basically allow the economy to to operate closer to. Uh, to its capacity. This last potential, when we're talking about factors that that cause this, this last one I wanted to talk to you about, I, I, I'll i say, like, I don't mean to insult anybody here. Uh, and, and also, like, I could totally be one of these people. But I'm also wondering if, if the type of jobs Canadians are working are, are part of the problem. Like, I, I have heard critiques of, of too many people working as managers or in what they'd call, like, email jobs, where they're, mo- they're more like providing a service, Right. The anthropologist David Graeber has called these bullshit jobs, uh, and I, I just wonder what you think about that. And is is that part of this or or not? So, so one thing I would say is that if someone is being paid to do a job, presumably, the, you know, the, the, there's a reason why they're they're being paid, and that uh, you know there there is some there is some economic benefit, uh, even if it's very indirect to what they're doing. And, you know, certainly I will tell you that the U.S. does not suffer for a lack of managerial jobs. Uh, they, you know, they, they have a lot of, a lot of service sector jobs as, as well. Um, so I, I, I don't know that we can, you know, just point to, uh, to, to, to that. I, I, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the public sector role in this. It, 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 it would be helpful to have the most efficient bureaucracy, uh, that that we could have, um, you know, it would also help in in a broader uh, sense if uh, you know if if government was as streamlined as as it could be in terms of the delivery of services, and that certainly goes for the private sector as uh, as as well. Um, but you know, like I said, the, the the U.S. has got a lot of head offices. They they certainly have a lot of uh, managers uh, in 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 the U.S. A lot of well paid managers. And it, that hasn't really harmed their their productivity. They are, by many measures, one of the most productive uh, nations in the world. So I, I wouldn't attribute it just, just to that. So we've talked today, you know, a lot about the importance of focusing on productivity, right? Um, And how it's so closely tied to our standards of living. But I'm just, I'm also wondering whether uh, there are limits, right, to prioritizing productivity, right? I I think of Unifor's economist recently pointing out, you know, aren't there jobs that do great things for our quality of life, like in healthcare, but don't necessarily do anything to directly boost our productivity numbers? Um, Actually, healthcare would would probably contribute a little bit to uh, j- just the way they measure uh, productivity. It's um, it, it it you know certainly would not be disregarded. And and by the way, we can always improve productivity in in the healthcare sector as uh, as well. But yes, I, I I do certainly take the point. You know there is uh, there 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 are lots of things to to quality of of life. There's there's no question uh, that that just your economic standard of of living isn't uh, def- definitely does not uh, answer the complete picture. I guess all I'm saying is, um, you know, and one of the reasons why I think we should pay to attention to productivity is we, we we should not be complacent in 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 this economy. We you know we do not want to see our our standards of uh, standard of living uh, stagnate over over a long period of uh, time. And 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 I do I am concerned that you know if we look over the last twenty or thirty years, uh, relative to other major economies, Kin has taken a, a bit of a step back. And by the way, one thing we didn't get into is you know how how well measured is is productivity, and it it is devilishly hard to uh, to measure precisely 
um, o- o- over over time. But I think it is fair to say that we we have slipped down the leagues over the years, and I think it definitely is worth paying attention to. And I'm in some ways I'm glad that the uh, the, the Bank of Canada did raise uh, the alarm on on this front because we we have seen a notable deterioration in recent years that I think is is well worth studying in greater depth. And just as a final question here. If we are complacent, right, and our productivity continues to decline, what does that look like in 5, 10, 15 years? Like, how could that materialize for people in their everyday lives? Well, I think in their, their everyday lives, what they would find is it's it's really tough to, to get ahead. It's tough for, you know, our, our, our children to, uh, to, to, to get ahead in, in, in a world where we're really not seeing, uh, you know, incomes per person rising. And and you know obviously in in even in that environment some people would be would be getting ahead but uh, you know if as an economy as a whole we're we're not improving then that means other others would be taking a step back and that uh, you know that can lead to real discontent and frustration I think if you know if if you know the pie isn't growing over overall it uh, you know it, it can lead to a lot of discontent and uh, you know y- even if you know other other areas are. Are, are, are doing relatively well if uh, if economically we're, we're not moving forward I, th- I think it can lead to, uh, to, to to broader disappointment all right um doug porter thank you so much for this it's this really interesting and i learned a lot thank you so much for coming by oh my pleasure thanks for having me all right that is all for today i'm jamie poisson thanks so much for listening talk to you tomorrow